Finally, U.S. Air Force declared SR-72. Dark Star is real. They said it was science fiction, a myth, a fantasy cooked up by aerospace dreamers. But what if we told you the next era of American aviation is already here, only cloaked in secrecy? For years, whispers about a mysterious aircraft known only as the SR-72 have circulated through defense circles and aerospace communities. Many dismissed it as a concept that would never leave the drawing board. But then, the puzzle pieces started to fall into place. Hidden behind the ultra-secretive walls of Lockheed Martin's skunk works, it seems something revolutionary is unfolding. Is the United States quietly crafting the fastest aircraft in human history? Let's dive deep into the classified shadows and see what lies beyond. Before we jump into what's coming, let's rewind to a legend. The SR-71 Blackbird. Born in the Cold War's crucible, this jet looked like something from a sci-fi film. A sleek, dark body tapering into a dagger-like nose. Its wings housing twin-engine nacelles, capable of roaring to Mach 3.2. It soared to 85,000 feet, so high pilots had to wear pressurized spacesuits just to stay conscious. Built with an eye on stealth, the Blackbird's radar cross-section was minimized long before stealth became mainstream. Its matte black skin wasn't just for looks. It was coated in radar-absorbing iron-based paint that managed heat and deflected enemy sensors. A full 85% of its structure was titanium, and much of it used specially formulated alloys designed to withstand extreme heat. The outer skin wasn't even smooth, it was corrugated, a feature that helped prevent cracking or warping under thermal expansion at high speeds. Even the windshield was next-gen, with triple-layered quartz glass ultrasonically sealed to a titanium frame. The Blackbird was a ghost in the sky. Over 4,000 missiles were fired at it throughout its service. None of them ever made contact, but as technology advanced, uh, the costs of maintaining such a marvel became unsustainable. In 1998, the SR-71 was finally grounded. NASA gave it one final hurrah before it, too, bowed out in 1999. But legends never die. They evolve. As early as the 2000s, Lockheed engineers knew it was time to build the next step, a true successor. By 2006, Skunk Works teamed up with Aerojet Rocketdyne to develop a revolutionary propulsion system, a turbine-based combined cycle engine, TBCC. This cutting-edge hybrid could handle subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic flight using turbine jets to get airborne and scramjets, supersonic combustion ramjets, to push into Mach 6 territory. But flying at six times the speed of sound isn't just about engine power. It's about heat. At those speeds, traditional materials would melt. So engineers had to push the envelope again, turning to exotic carbon ceramics and metal composites the same stuff used on ICBMs and space shuttles. In 2013, Lockheed Martin finally went public. The SR-72 was real, and it would be twice as fast as the Blackbird. A new motto emerged, speed is the new stealth. Unlike its predecessor, which was built with slide rules and no onboard computers, the SR-72 would be born from digital models, AI-driven simulations, and additive manufacturing. By 2016, Lockheed's CEO said they were on the verge of a breakthrough, promising a full-sized hypersonic prototype for under $1 billion. And in 2018, those claims were reaffirmed. The digital tools had caught up to the vision, making the Son of Blackbird possible not just in theory, but in steel, ceramic, and fire. The SR-72's primary payload? Hypersonic weapons. The U.S. military is already working on these next-gen missiles, and Lockheed proved decades ago that it could launch missiles at Mach 3 using its YF-12 prototypes. Doing so at Mach 6 is the next logical leap. Still think this is all fantasy? Remember the secretive hypersonic jet featured in Top Gun, Maverick, Dark Star? It wasn't just Hollywood magic. Skunk Works helped design it, and it looks so real that, according to reports, China redirected a spy satellite just to get a glimpse of it. Whether it was fiction or not, the line between movie magic and military technology is becoming increasingly blurry. Initially, test flights for the SR-72 were rumored to begin in 2025. Now, estimates push those expectations to sometime between 2027 and 2029, 
What's more certain is that it aligns with the U.S. Air Force's long-term hypersonic strategy. Funding is in place, the momentum is real, and the race to stay ahead of Russia and China is on. Of course, the cost of developing the SR-72 will be nothing short of astronomical. We're talking about a program that could rival the budgets of entire defense departments, an endeavor that demands not just funding, but political will, secrecy, and the most advanced engineering talent on the planet. And don't even think about seeing an export version. This isn't just another fighter jet or reconnaissance plane. This is a flying vault of top secret technology. The SR-72 will house some of the most classified, cutting edge systems ever authorized by the Pentagon. Technology so sensitive, its existence alone could shift the global balance of power. Hypersonic propulsion, stealth capabilities beyond our current understanding, AI-assisted navigation and targeting systems. These aren't features for sale, not now, not ever. But when this mysterious aircraft finally breaks through the veil of secrecy and streaks across the sky, it won't just be another marvel of aerospace engineering. No, it could mark a turning point, a moment where the limits of modern aviation are redrawn, a glimpse into the future of warfare, surveillance, and flight itself. When it finally emerges from the shadows, the world may never look at the skies the same way again. So, when will the skies tremble once more at the roar of a new blackbird? And will the SR-72 truly live up to its mythic expectations? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Will it stay locked behind hangar doors? Or will it blaze a new trail across the sky? What if I told you the US just tested a top secret hypersonic weapon so fast and advanced, it could leave even the legendary SR-72 Dark Star in its dust? In a world where speed is power, a silent revolution has just taken place high above our heads. The United States has reportedly conducted a covert hypersonic weapons test that has left defense analysts, scientists, and rival nations in total disbelief. Whispers from deep within the aerospace community suggest this next-gen technology might have shattered Mach 6 and possibly even touched Mach 10. And that's right, an aircraft potentially faster than the SR-72, the supposed successor to the iconic SR-71 Blackbird. But what exactly did they test? And how did it leap beyond the known limits of speed and science? Buckle up, because we're about to journey into the extraordinary world of futuristic flight that's rewriting the rules of aerospace warfare. At first glance, hypersonic technology seems like it belongs in a sci-fi epic. But this isn't fiction. It's the culmination of decades of scientific grind, secret experiments, and innovation stretching all the way back to the Cold War era. While we tend to think of hypersonics as a 21st century marvel, its roots trace back to the high-stakes U.S.-Soviet arms race, where both sides competed fiercely for dominance in the skies and beyond. Back in 1959, the X-15 rocket plane blazed through the sky and into the history books, reaching Mach 6.7, still a record for manned flight, but it came at a cost. The X-15 relied on rocket engines that guzzled fuel and had minimal flight time, making long-distance travel utterly impractical. The idea of practical hypersonic flight sat dormant for decades, collecting dust in black-budget research labs until now. Today, with global tensions rising and nations scrambling for technological supremacy, hypersonic research has roared back to life. The dream? Create ultra-fast, maneuverable systems that can dodge missile defenses and strike targets with razor-sharp precision. Enter the age of air-breathing engines. Unlike rockets that carry bulky oxidizers, scramjets and ramjets inhale atmospheric oxygen, massively improving fuel efficiency. Rocket engines max out around 450 seconds of specific impulse, while air-breathing tech like scramjets can exceed 1,000 seconds, enabling longer, faster, and more practical missions. Here's the catch. Scramjets don't work at low speeds. That's why engineers often use hybrid propulsion systems, combining turbojets for takeoff and ramjets for sustained hypersonic crews. And one startup, Hermes, is changing the game with this approach. Meet the Chimera engine, a turbine-based combined cycle propulsion system inspired by the mythical creature. It seamlessly shifts between turbojet and ramjet modes, allowing their aircraft, the quarter horse, to take off like a traditional jet and then accelerate into hypersonic territory. 
all without the need for a separate launch vehicle. Hermes didn't just dream this up, they built it. In just 21 months, with a shockingly small budget of $18 million, they outpaced billion-dollar defense programs. Their engine uses the battle-tested General Electric J-85 turbojet, used in aircraft like the T-38 Talon, and they're already advancing to Chimera II, now powered by the mighty Pratt & Whitney F-100, the same engine behind the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon. But speed comes with heat, and lots of it. Hypersonic travel generates skin-melting friction temperatures. Hermes tackled this with innovative thermal design and a breakthrough pre-cooler that chills incoming air before it hits the engine. This not only boosts performance, but protects the system from overheating, an essential step toward reusable hypersonic flight. Now Hermes is setting its sights higher, literally. Their next-gen aircraft is being designed to cruise at altitudes between 80,000 and 85,000 feet double the cruising height of commercial jets, and possibly even break the SR-71's top speed of Mach 3.3. That means soaring through the thin upper atmosphere at blistering speeds, pushing the limits of what we thought was possible. This aircraft isn't just a technological leap, it represents a seismic shift in how humanity thinks about speed, power, and strategic dominance. What we're witnessing isn't merely a faster plane, this is a machine capable of outperforming even the most advanced missiles, evading detection systems designed to track threats in real time and reaching virtually any target on Earth within mere minutes. We're entering a new era where national borders, geographic obstacles, and even oceans become irrelevant in the face of such speed and precision. Imagine this, traditional intercontinental ballistic missiles, despite being extraordinarily fast, still follow a predictable arc and trigger immediate alarms when launched. They can be intercepted, tracked, and potentially neutralized by missile defense systems. This isn't just about military superiority, although that's clearly one of its major implications. The existence of such an aircraft redefines what response time means in modern warfare. Strategic deterrence has always depended on the ability to respond swiftly and decisively to threats. But now with a platform that could strike anywhere in the world in under an hour, potentially within just 20 minutes, those old metrics become obsolete. Leaders and defense strategists will be forced to reconsider everything from troop deployment and border security to nuclear deterrence and global conflict escalation protocols. But the impact doesn't stop at the battlefield. This aircraft also hints at the future of global transportation. A flight from New York to Tokyo currently takes around 14 hours. With hypersonic technology, that same journey could be reduced to under two hours. Business, diplomacy, tourism, and humanitarian aid could operate on timelines that were previously unimaginable. 